Now at six, a local woman says her mold complaints will result in the loss of her home. Plus, a class in Oklahoma looks to preserve the Quapaw language for future generations. And road crews in Joplin see the finish line for a major road construction project. The four states most watched news starts now. Pittsburgh woman believes her lease is not being renewed because she reported mold concerns at her home. This is KOIM News at 6. I'm Dow Quick. She says she's fought the mold issue for years, with KOIM even reporting on the problem back in 2019. KOIM Samantha Walker sat down with the woman to learn more about why she believes she's not being allowed to stay. When I go to my work and I hug the kids when they come in in the school and they give me a hug and they say, Miss better your clothes stink. That's a problem. It's a problem. And I just laugh it off. And then I go in my office and I sit and cry because I'm disgusted. When Susan Ledbetter moved into her home at the Pittsburgh Highland Housing Development six years ago, she believed it would be a place to make great memories with her family. But she says for years now, she struggled with mold issues. Ledbetter says she reported the mold problems every time, both to the previous and the current property management companies. She says when she reported her concerns to the regional property manager, she received back a text saying, not mold again, with a crying face emoji. Every time I walk into the house and get a migraine, I know the mold is back. When my daughter walks in and instantly starts hacking and coughing, we know the mold is back. In August, Ledbetter says the mold was the worst it has ever been. The property owner moved her into a hotel for a week, as even her floors had to be replaced. Soon after she moved back into her home, she says she received a notice that her lease is no longer being renewed. Ledbetter believes it's because she has consistently reported the issues with mold. They don't want to renew the lease when they already sent me. They've already invited me to stay. You see this. They've already invited me to stay. And then they're taking it away. So there's so many things wrong with this. We reached out to the Moline Management Company who manages the development for a statement. The CEO says any mold issues at the development are resolved. He says the company is not the true owners of the property and he declined to provide further information about the ownership. For now, Ledbetter says that she and her teen daughter will have to live apart until they can find a new home. She says other tenants have similar concerns but are now fearful to speak up. Ledbetter says she's concerned for whoever moves in after her. People say, why don't you just leave? Because why is it that people just let people continue to walk all over them and get away with something? They're a multi-million dollar company. This is nothing for them. They are bullying me. They're making me leave. Because why? Because I asked them to fix something. I've been asking them for years. If they would have taken care of it years ago, we wouldn't be sitting here. But they didn't take care of it. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. We reached out to the city of Pittsburgh and were told they have not received previous reports of mold at the development. Since then, Ledbetter says she reached out to the city commissioners, the community development and housing director, and the Pittsburgh Housing Authority. She says she's looking at her legal options to try to make sure this doesn't happen to other tenants. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for our first look at the weather. Well, it turned out to be kind of a chilly day for us today with the clouds and on and off very light showers across the region. That's what we're seeing right now. Joplin, Pittsburgh, some of the roads a little bit on the wet side, so be careful if you are going to be out this evening. 65 in Lamar, 65 in Monette, 73 in Bella Vista, 69 in Miami. We have 68 in Parsons, but our temperatures over the next couple days actually look pretty good. We're going to get back up to where we should be for this time of the year. Upper 70s on Wednesday, plenty of sunshine. Even on Thursday, we should go into the upper 70s for highs. All right, light showers continue to work through, and we're going to see this over the next couple hours. And then later on tonight, a few of these guys may get in here as well. So hit and miss showers we will drop back into the 50s. But sunshine returns tomorrow. We're going to look at that here in a bit. See you soon. Search and rescue crews in Barry County, Missouri, respond to an alert of two adults lost in part of the Mark Twain National Forest. The alert came in just after one this morning. Search and rescue from Central Crossing Fire Protection District responded with equipment and a search and rescue canine 
to the Piney Creek Wilderness area of the park. Crews found that pair okay at around 540 this morning. The Quapaw Language Department is kicking off their language classes today. The instructor will begin teaching about pronunciation as a foundation for the class. The goal is to promote cultural preservation. Organizers hope to pass down the Quapaw language so future generations can feel more connected to their culture. It's just a lifelong thing, just like any other language, but it's just so different from English that it's, it's hard for people to even start to grasp um, that you have to just speak in a completely different way. Your thought process has to be just totally separate from English. Quapa is considered a dormant language, so no one speaks it fluently. One of the goals of the class is to build toward fluency. We're going to have a lot more for you on this story tonight on KOAM News at 10. Major piece of road work appears to be finishing, uh, nearing a finish line. Crews have been busy widening Connecticut Avenue in Joplin from two lanes to five with walking paths on both sides from 32nd to 38th Street. The project stems from the passage of the capital improvement sales tax passed by voters in 2004 and then renewed in 2014 and 2024. Completion of that project is expected by mid-November. The Lady Eagles take on the Lady Wildcats this afternoon in a COC matchup. John Dales has a preview of this big game and more coming up later in sports. But up first, we're less than 24 hours away from the launch of our new KOAM streaming service. It's called KOAM Plus and our streaming anchor Jordan Keyes will have all the information. Boy, it's an exciting time here at KOAM. For months now, our crew has been working behind the scenes preparing to bring you a whole new way to receive the four states number one news station. It's our brand new 24 hour streaming service to the KOAM Plus app. And who better to introduce it than our own streaming anchor, Jordan Keys. I am here in the KOAM Plus Digital Center where every day we'll be working to share with you live news updates, breaking news and weather forecasts from the Skywatch weather team. This is my workspace and where a lot of that content starts, and it's all designed to make sure that you can stay up to date with the news and weather in a different, easy way. So what can you get from KOAM Plus? Well, you can get and stay informed. We've overhauled our streaming efforts to bring you top of the hour live updates, breaking news as it happens, and weather every 10 minutes. The free app is the best way to get the news that matters to you on your time 24 seven. In addition to streaming our regular morning and evening newscasts for free, you'll get live updates throughout the day with the most up-to-date information on stories that matter to you. The new look of KOAM Plus also has a graphic with live radar information and forecasts for cities around the four states anytime you turn it on. You can also see updated headlines of the day scrolling below. One of my favorite parts of the app is the on-demand content. All our videos live here and you can watch past special reports, in-depth interviews, and exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. And if you don't have a connected TV, don't worry. You can always watch the stream on KOAM Plus anytime. KOAM Plus powers the stream on the KOAM News Now app and on KOAMNewsNow.com. I'm Jordan Keyes, KOAM News Now. Yeah, we're excited about it. You're going to be able to watch the new streaming player on all KOAM digital platforms. A little bit later, the state of Arkansas is going to get some representation in the halls of Congress from a famous son. Plus, our temperatures are going to warm back up just a little bit. We're going to look at that coming up. Well, of course, uh, kind of gloomy outside for us today. A lot of clouds. We've had some light showers and sprinkles kind of rotating through, and we're going to continue to see that over the next few hours. Nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam downtown Joplin looking off toward the north and to the east. All right, temperatures. Clouds have kind of kept them down just a bit. Most of us across the board are setting mid to upper 60s to near 70 once you get in our southern counties. Outside here's 7th and range line setting at 67. Pretty much calm winds. Uh, visibility is good, but we are going to have some hit and miss showers over the next few hours and then eventually we'll clear out and drop back 
into the 50s later on tonight. All right, you can see these light showers rotating through very light, mainly long the I-44 corridor at this point in time behind it. We do have a few little thunderstorms that have popped up near Kansas City. These will work into our northern counties later on this evening and then start to fall apart. So we are going to have hit and miss showers as we go through the next several hours as this wave rotates through. Plus, look at our upper level winds right out of Canada. So that's why we have the refreshing temperatures on top of us. Also dropping south, we have tropical storm Helene, which should become a hurricane here as we go through the next 24 hours. Clocking winds at 50 miles per hour, so it's going to track northwest and then eventually take a turn off toward the north and to the east, become a category one hurricane over the next 36 hours and then possibly a two or a low grade three before it makes landfall in Florida by the time we get into Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. Then this moisture kind of slingshots its way back toward the west and fingers crossed, we get a little bit of that in here as we go through uh, late this week, heading into the weekend. But look at these systems. So our area of low pressure now, here's our hurricane. They kind of slingshot around each other or pivot around each other. And then our area of low pressure eventually absorbs what's left of the tropical system. But unfortunately, most of this moisture is going to stay just east of the region. Hopefully we can get a few showers in here. If we look at Friday, you can see a few showers trying to get into our eastern counties may get into Joplin, but most of the rain is going to stay central Missouri, central Arkansas, and then off toward the east. Still slight chances for a few showers on Saturday. So we'll have to see if that moisture shifts a little bit farther west or if it stays east of the region. But as of right now, the heavier rainfall amounts are going to stay kind of Springfield, Branson and points east. But Still, fingers crossed, maybe we can get a few showers from it. All right, so we have our light showers rotating through this evening. Clear out a little bit of patchy fog late tonight, so watch out for that. We'll drop back into lower 50s, lower 70s by noon. Plenty of sunshine on Wednesday. High temps, 77, 78 degrees. Tomorrow night looks good as well. Drop back into lower 50s and then very similar again on Thursday. Day planner 55 to start, 72 by noon, high temp. 78 degrees. Let's go 77 on Thursday, 74 on Friday, 76 on Saturday with a few scattered showers. Again, uh, we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed on that. Hopefully we'll get a few showers, but overall temperatures looking pretty good over the next week. If you need it with the prospect, at least the possibility of showers, this would be a good time. Yeah, very so true. Feel free to uh, seed my lawn. <laughs> Still ahead, Missouri's Southern Women's Golf wraps up day two of the MIAA Fall Conference Preview. And Joplin High School softball hosts Neosho. John Dales has those stories and more coming up next. Well, stationary and motion leather furniture is on sale. Find big deals on sofa groups, sectionals, and recliners. Save up to 40% off all things leather. At Pittsburgh Interiors, luxury meets local charm. Find us on the south side of Pittsburgh. Family owned and operated since 1999. Rock Show, September 27th through the 29th. Joplin, be there. Here are the stars of our show. I am your host, Ryan Seacrest. The view you love is back. Yes! There it is. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Six nights a week on KOAM TV. Dear road rivals, no truck on the road drives value like the Tundra. Day after day, mile after mile, it all adds up to big savings under the hood. What's under yours? Toyota Tundra. Lease the 2024 Tundra for $3.99 a month or get 1.99% APR financing for 48 months on Tundra. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Despite being such a large company, um, we still have that small town business vibe. Most of us are able to work in multiple places doing multiple different things and uh, just about everybody gets along here. I like all my coworkers. Apply today. Neosho High School softball continues its defense of the 2023 Central Ozark Conference Championship on the road this evening. Lady Wildcats travel to Joplin 
We'll have the highlights between the Lady Eagles and Lady Wildcats for you tonight at 9 on Fox 14, then again at 10 right here on KOAM. Joplin won its last time out. That was at Seneca just last night. Meanwhile, Neosho has hit a little bit of a rut recently. The Lady Wildcats have lost five in a row and six of their last seven entering tonight. This one just got started a little over an hour ago at five. Again, check back in here tonight for full game highlights between these two COC foes. Busy evening for Missouri High School softball. You heard me mention Seneca, the Lady Indians in action again this evening, taking on Monette at home. Elsewhere in the Big 8, McDonald County is at home. Lady Mustangs host Cassville. That's the first of two meetings between these two in the regular season. Well, Missouri Southern and Pittsburgh State men's golf both finish up play at the second day of the MSSU Invitational this afternoon. Same is true for Missouri Southern women's golf, who's up in Nebraska at the MIAA Fall Conference Preview. Starting on the men's side, here's a look at the leaderboard of that two-day tournament, which features 16 teams. Arkansas Fort Smith takes first, followed by Arkansas Tech, then a three-way tie for third. Pittsburgh State takes 10th. Remember, the Gorillas are in their first year back as an NCAA program since 2014, and Missouri Southern ties for 13th. Individually, Southern and Pitt State each have one golfer inside the top 20 of the field. That's Ben Markman for the Lions and Carson Towie for the Gorillas. Couple of the 84 total golfers competing in this event over the past two days, Pitt State also with Mason White and Keaton Thissen, both of them inside the top 40. Missouri Southern Women's Golf is over in Kearney, Nebraska. Again, they're taking part in the MIAA Fall Conference Preview. 15 teams participating. The Lions finish in fifth after the final round this afternoon. Central Missouri takes first place with a nine-stroke lead on the rest of the field. Now here's the individual leaderboard just finished up. Shayla Nordland from Fort Hayes State takes first place at one over. Missouri Southern has three golfers in the top 20. Marin Harlow leads the way in seventh place. She shoots a two-day total of six over par after going one over today. Over to Major League Baseball, Royals fans keep getting more and more nervous, understandably so. Tonight they play the Nationals. That comes as Kansas City has lost seven games in a row and has slid from the second wild card spot to the third with just a one game lead on the Twins with eight games left in the regular season. Mariners not too far behind either. They're just one and a half games back in Kansas City. In the National League, no playoffs this year for the Cardinals. That much we already know. They've been eliminated, but they're in Colorado this evening facing the Rockies. That's it for sports. We're back after this. Find huge savings during Ashley's homecoming party this Thursday. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14 tonight. The Quapaw Language Department kicks off the first day of classes today. Plus, we're going to learn more about Donald Trump's plan to lure foreign companies to the U.S. And Girard students learn entrepreneurship skill through a lemonade stand. Those stories, a lot more, of course. It's coming up tonight, KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. An unlikely likeness is now gracing the U.S. Capitol. A bronze statue of famed singer and songwriter Johnny Cash was unveiled today. It joins politicians and other historical figures in the Capitol Visitor Center Emancipation Hall. Arkansas sent the likeness of its native son to represent the state. Cash's statue is the second that Arkansas sent to represent the uh, state at the U.S. Capitol, replacing two existing ones. A statue depicting civil rights leader Daisy Bates was unveiled at the Capitol earlier this year. Members of the Man in Black's family were on hand for today's honor. He was a flawed but profoundly humble, kind, and compassionate man with a magnificent generosity of spirit who loved those who suffered because he knew great suffering and loss. He loved those who reached for a better life because he picked cotton and sweated and toiled and took that sweat and used it as a template for art and service. Cash said he wore black to honor the poor and hungry prisoners and those destroyed by age or drugs. He sold 90 million albums during his six decade career. The music legend died in 2003 at the age of 71. I knew of his links to Tennessee and to Memphis specifically. I didn't know he was from Arkansas. 
Yeah. But now we do. A lot of great songs. In this Absolutely. Career. Weather looking pretty nice. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, 78 uh, tomorrow. We are going to start with a little bit of patchy fog. 77 on Thursday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here for KOAM News at 10. Let's make it a great evening.